Hi everyone. I want to mention three people: uh, Dennis Noble and Richard Dawkins, Douglas McGrath. Uh, these three people received doctor degree in biology, or uh, taught biology at Oxford University. Oh, now they all retired professors. Uh, first, uh, we briefly introduce the history of uh, three people uh, with photos, um, and the detailed history can be searched at any time on the internet. Uh, so I will mention it very briefly here. Uh, first, uh, Dennis Noble. Uh, Dennis Noble received his PhD from University College uh, London, and but he taught biology at Oxford University. He is a systems biologist. When Richard Dawkins, the famous, uh, most famous scientist, Richard Dawkins was pursuing his PhD, uh, Dennis Noble was a member of the jury uh, for Dawkins' doctoral dissertation. Uh, Noble uh, is also a biological philosopher with many publications in journals and philosophy books. Um, uh, let's check the most representative points of Noble's systems biology. Uh, the principles of systems biology, one, uh, biological functionality is multi-level, not one way, multi-level, multi-way. Transmission of information is not one way, uh, is uh, different from Richard Dawkins' view. The transmission of information is not one way, just like Jin, not one Jin. So uh, complicated each other. Three, DNA is not the sole transmitter of inheritance, uh, different from uh, Richard Dawkins. Uh, four, the theory of biological relativity. Uh, there is no privileged level of uh, causality, uh, biological relativity, not one way, multi, multi-level, uh, very complex. Uh, it is biological relativity. Five, a gene ontology will fail, uh, just like Richard Dawkins. Gene ontology will fail without higher level insight. Six, there is no genetic program. Seven, there are no programs at any other level. Eight, there are no programs in the brain. Nine, self is not an object. Ten, there are many more to be discovered. A genuine theory of biology does not yet exist. One way is not yet exist. Multi-way, multi-level, and uh, complexity relativity. Uh, that's the uh, principles of systems biology. Uh, the point is that there is still an enormous amount science does not know about the phenomena of life, phenomena of biology. Knowing genes, uh, just like Richard Dawkins, knowing genes is a very important and big step forward, but genes also play a very small role in the world of life, in the world of biology. Now, how does the entire system of life work is always important, and we still know very little about it. That's the uh, principles of uh, systems biology. And next, the famous uh, scientist Richard Dawkins. Uh, he's a very famous person, and we don't need to mention a lot about him. Richard Dawkins have a doctorate uh, in biology uh, from Oxford University, and uh, he is the world's most famous scientist. Uh, he is a, a popular, uh, famous and science writer, a famous researcher of genes. His famous book, The Selfish Gene, The God Delusion. I also read these books. Um, and the next person, um, Alistair McGrath. 
Alistair McGrath. Um, he received all, all, he has three doctoral degrees. Uh, it is all, all these degrees from Oxford, same university. Uh, first, he had a doctorate in biology, and next, doctor in theology, and uh, next, a doctorate in literature. He taught theology and science and at Oxford. Uh, Richard Dawkins and Alistair McGrath both received doctoral degrees in biology from Oxford. But Dawkins became professor of biology at Oxford, and McGrath became a pastor <laughs> and then a professor of theology at the same uh, Oxford University. Another person, uh, uh, Dennis Noble, is a professor of biology at Oxford. But he's a scientist, far from his former student, Richard Dawkins. Professor Noble uh, is a systems biologist. And unlike Dawkins, uh, Noble emphasizes uh, the greatest force that determines life is the biological system rather than the gene. Noble emphasizes the organic and holistic view of life. System is most important, very complexity, organic and uh, uh, holistic, uh, holistic uh, view of life. Now, Dennis Noble is also known for being interested in Buddhism and visiting Korean Buddhist temples several times to learn about uh, Korean Buddhism. Now, he is a world-class scientist, but he is also open to faith. Faith does not come from reason. The realm of faith and science are different from each other. Uh, critics of faith among scientists, especially Richard Dawkins and uh, Neil Tyson, the famous uh, astrophysician, um, the student of Carl Sagan, uh, Richard Dawkins and Neil Tyson induce atheism by emphasizing that science must be verifiable and theoretically sound, and that faith must also be. Their saying uh, is true, but I think uh, among the most famous scientists, there are many who are Christians. Among the most rational scientists, uh, there are many, pa many Christians passionately uh, live their faith. Uh, moreover, uh, Professor Dennis Noble, who was a professor of uh, physiology at the same Oxford University, uh, was Dawkins' doctoral thesis uh, examiner. Uh, but Dennis Noble's major department is uh, embryology. Embryology, uh, this person tells a completely different theory from Dawkins' assertion. Dawkins' assertion that genes are the most absolute and strongest. Um, but Dennis Noble, um, after his lifetime of embryological research, Dennis Noble say, uh, says, if you scientifically study human heredity, human development, um, you can realize that uh, genes do not exercise any absolute power. Uh, Noble says, the body and the entire body organ work together organically depending on the situation at the time. And the results are passed on to the next generation. Although Professor Dawkins and Professor Noble are both teacher and student, um, they also have different thoughts. And, but they, have, they say they are uh, very good friends each other. Uh, uh, there is also a video on the, uh, their public discussion on uh, YouTube. Uh, I checked that 
uh, video. Or uh, from what I've heard uh, uh, from that video, uh, Professor Noble's argument uh, seems more persuasive. Dawkins' book is such a well done book. I like that. And Dawkins' writing is so well expressed. Most people will only have Dawkins' thoughts in their heads. Uh, however, it should not be forgotten. The same, so another scientist have different opinions. Uh, I mentioned three scientists uh, live in the same department of biology at Oxford University, go their separate ways. Dennis Noble is a reductionist and believer who emphasized the whole. And Richard Dawkins is an atheist, emphasized genes. And uh, Douglas McGrath is a professor and priest who teaches theology as a doctor of biology and doctor of theology. Uh, there's no correct answer to this, I think. No good or evil, no right or wrong. It's just that the circumstances they were in, their own inner strength uh, caused them to go on different path. Although I'm a Christian and I'm, I'm not defending Vance Noble or Alistair McGrath. Um, in particular, Dawkins, the famous books, Selfish Gene and uh, God Delusion are very interesting and lead readers excitedly. I also learned a lot intellectually from these books. But we should read other books too. Read Professor Noble's article. Also, is to look at McGrath's thoughts together. If you say stay at the level of undergraduate level, if you have only read uh, only read Dawkins, you will think that Dawkins' argument is absolute. But when I read uh, Dawkins' book, uh, 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 the very good books, uh, I also really uh, sympathized with him and accepted Dawkins' thoughts. Uh, but uh, if we uh, look more broadly, other than Dawkins, especially Professor Dennis Noble, uh, made a completely different argument. Uh, the alumni of BioStudy, uh, uh, McGrath became a pastor and even a professor in the theology department uh, in the same Oxford. I want to uh, say this to you. Uh, the point is, science is never hostile to faith. Never hostile relationship with uh, uh, between science and s faith. Although I'm a pastor, although I'm a theologian, I always study science. I want to be the most scientific person. But why, strangely, do science and faith seem to be antagonistic? That's what the 2,000-year history of the church in the West uh, tells us. This is because Western Christians and Western theologians abandoned the scientific and open attitude of the ancient Greeks. Even though Christian faith is not originally a narrow idea, Western Christianity has locked everything with the fence of Christian faith. So when someone says uh, something scientific, is thought somehow anti-Christian. We know the story of uh, Galileo Galilei, uh, who had to risk his life uh, even for the most basic thing, <laughs> the fact that the earth rotates. This kind of happening did not happen because Christianity was wrong, but because of wrong Christians and their wrong view of faith. The reason why faith has built a world with science 
is entirely because of Christians who have misbehaved in the past 2,000 years. Looking back on history, narrow-minded believers, ignorant believers, and believers who try to gain their own power and gain through doctrines, rather led religion and science into a hostile relationship. As a result, many scientists have been threatened with death because of their faith, but it's wrong. Faith has nothing to do with science. Rather, faith and science can exist together. Quietly investigate, rather, many scientists are believers. Many scientists are Christians, even now. Some people became pastors with PhDs in astrophysics. Uh, other people in PhD in astrophysics, uh, just like Carl Sagan, Billy Tyson, they are uh, non-Christian, but some people have PhD in astrophysics, became Christians, and became pastors. Faith is not denied or affirmed by science. It's just that the individual, individual asks himself. It's not a matter of individual. Ask himself, will I become a believer? Are you going to be a non-believer? Just only the matter of choice, or only the matter of situation. Uh, rather, Dawkins, I, I think, uh, Dawkins' own strong atheistic conviction is somewhat like a, a somewhat like a false doctrine, somewhat like a false dogma. Dawkins rather turned his science into a dogma and confined himself to the boundaries of his own science, I think. I think uh, true, science, true science is openness. Science must have an attitude that's not intolerant and open to all things and open to all speculations. Science should not limit people by becoming by becoming a doctrine or dogma of science itself. Just like the past 2,000 years of Christian history in the West. Thank you.